So Bob's working a lonely night shift in, uh, you know, PA General Hospital up north somewhere. Um, and in comes a um, 30-year-old man who was an MVC. Um, he was a side impact. Initially had a GCS of 15 in the field. But on arrival in the eMERGE, has a vital signs of 80 over 50, heart rate of 150, uh, saturation of 93%, and a rest rate of 16. And the patient's rolling in right now. You may begin managing the case. All right, uh, Carrie, I, I think I'll need you to help me for a second. Can you get some oxygen on this gentleman, please? Hi, <laughs> sir. How are you? Um, try not to move for me. My name's Bob. Um, we just need to do a few things and uh, get you organized here to help you out. So what I'm going to do is uh, just uh, an oxygen mask uh, car. I think we might be able to have one in one of the bags over there. Um, okay, so do you know where you are, sir? Did you respond to me at all? He's not responding to you. Okay, so he's not responding. So what we're probably going to do, um, does he respond to any painful stimulus at all, this guy? He uh, will withdraw. To he will stimulus, withdraw. Yeah. Okay, so the Glasgow Coma Scale has dropped, so we'll actually forget that. And you said that he's actually breathing on his own? He's breathing on his own. Okay, um, at a rate of? At 16. Okay, so we'll still actually want to watch his airway, so what I want to do is probably just put an oropharyngeal airway to protect his airway because he's got reduced level of consciousness. So we'll actually just insert that. Does he accept the airway? He is accepting the airway. Holy smokes, all right, good. So his Glasgow Coma Scale has decreased somewhat. So what I'm going to do is we're going to watch this guy like a hawk, and I'll just keep you over here, Kari, to the head of the bed. Um, okay, so we're just looking at A. He's actually making some respiratory um, uh, motions, is he? And we have air entry in and out? Yes. Okay, so that's good. So air entries, uh, he's breathing spontaneously at this point. I just want to have a quick auscultation. Uh, can you put him on the monitor for me, please? And uh, G, I'll need two large bore IVs, okay, both AC. And while we're there, uh, Trace, can you actually draw some bloods for me? We'll need a trauma panel, so CBC lights, um, uh, PTT, uh, or coags, actually. And amylase as well. So what are you checking for in your uh, auscultation? Air entry. Air entry, yeah. Air entry. And you're also checking his trachea for yeah. uh, any deviation. So I got air entry both sides at this point? You have uh, lowered air entry on the right side. So decreased air entry on the left side, okay. And he's on the SAT monitor, what does he show? His SAT's dropping, okay. it's now 86%. Okay. So you also notice that his uh, trachea is deviated. So there's a tracheal deviation, so we probably would suspect at this point um, uh, pneumothorax under tension, so I just need to get a um, an 18 gauge actually, or a 14 gauge. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to try and decompress, and I'll need a chest tube as well ready. So uh, mid clavicular line, um, second intercostal space just above the third rib, and actually I'll I'll say that I'll just introduce that, and it actually goes in. So I'll say that we have a chest tube or. Oh, I heard that little... You heard the hit <laughs> sound, yes. <laughs> yeah. So All success. Right. So okay, so that's good. So we'll get a chest tube ready, because we'll have to ins uh, insert that anyway. I'll just re-auscultate. Air entry on the right? Yes. Air entry on the left? Improved, yes. Okay, improved sets? The sets are improving now. Now okay, you have 95%. Um, and now what I'll do is we'll need to get a blood pressure. I just, while I'm here, um, I'm just doing a quick cursory primary survey. I just want to feel for symmetry of... Um, Pulses at this point? Pulses are symmetrical but thready. Thready? Okay. And so what I need to do um, is uh, get, uh, <coughs> I want to do a liter right now, so 500 each bag um, over the next 5-10 minutes and call the blood bank as well and let them know that we're going to need some <coughs> O. Negative. O negative. Yeah, <coughs> negative. Yeah, okay, let me get that. All right. So next thing I want to do, so I've got airway breathing circulation done. I just want to do a quick wet check um, and see if there's any blood anywhere. What else can you do in your circulation assessment? Uh, well, I checked uh, central pulses, peripheral pulses. We've got a blood pressure uh, on him. What is blood pressure now? His blood pressure has improved. It's now uh, 85 over 50. Oh, yeah, from 80 over 50. From 80 systolic? Okay, so, um, <coughs> so primary airway is being managed currently. I'll come back to that in a split second. Uh, breathing is being uh, monitored. He is breathing at a rate of 16. SATs are improving somewhat. Chest tube is getting set up. We called for gen surge, ortho, probably the neuroids. 
Uh, neural, rather. Why ortho? Ortho, probably, because we're going to have... Aren't they not part of the trauma team? Um, oh, yeah, I guess they would be in this case. But uh, we don't have any uh, musculoskeletal injuries yet on secondary surveys. So. Well, I haven't done a secondary yet, yeah. so I'm still doing a primary. So you mentioned about... Um, the uh, circulatory status. So we just look at him overall perfusion. Is he pale? Uh, any cyanosis? He's pink and well, well perfused. Well perfused. Yeah. So um, cap refill is probably under two seconds. We've got a blood pressure of 80, which is still not great, but it's coming up. Um, and then we're actually going to do the balance of the. Uh, oh, you can also oh, do. Um, oh, we can also do a fast. At oh this yeah, time. okay, yeah. yeah. I forgot about the fast. Yeah. So. You can check for free fluid in the abdomen, uh, okay. etc. Okay, so yeah. So, yeah, I should actually get that done too. So the so fast, let's, uh, fa let's assume the fast is negative. Okay, good. Fast is negative. Great. Okay, so next thing we want to do, he's still boarded and collared. Uh, we're just going to go down really quickly and have a quick peek, make sure that there's no occult blood, and then I'll go back, reassess the airway, and uh, start a secondary. So, um, can he still hear me at all or respond to any painful stimuli? He's, uh, he responds with, um, uh, his GCS has improved somewhat. It's He's responding with um, incoherent gas and he re withdraws to pain. Okay, so he's probably, he looks like a 6 on the uh, GCS scale. Um, okay, so let's start at the top then. I'm just going to place my hands on his head and we're going to palpate, look for blood and or any um, depress uh, depressions, um, hematomas. Um, frontal bone, look at his eyes and check the pupils now. Yeah. So pupils, pupils are at? Uh, pupil on the right is 2 millimeters, pupil on the left is 5 millimeters and not reactive. Okay, so left-sided uh, uh, brain injury, okay, so I'll continue down with the maxilla, uh, check his nose. You uh, notice clear drainage from his nose. Clear drainage from his nose and the left uh, uh, Ear, synthetic membrane? There, it's bloody. Okay, bloody, and if I actually do a bullseye like uh, Robin had asked? It's positive. Okay, so we have uh, CSF leakage, so uh, definitely we want neuro here. Yeah. Um, do me a favor, Carr, actually, what we're, and how's his breathing still at this point? His breathing is stable for now. Stable, he's still breathing on his own? He's still breathing on his own. Okay, I'm probably still going to tube this guy anyway because uh, of his GCS, number one, and two, for airway management. He has a history of a declining GCS. Okay. I'm 15 in the field, so you definitely would be justified. In okay, so we'll actually do that. So at this point here, maybe with the two lines, and I'll probably give him a little atropine or something on the side. So atropine to lower his ICP. Yeah, for, for his ICP. And, um, okay, so we'll actually do that. So we'll use an 8 on this guy, and I'll just sort of grab this here. And so we'll say that Kari tubed him, and the tube is in place. Kari, that's great. Tube, you, you just, just did. How do you confirm tube placement? Tube placement. So uh, we'll actually do an entitled CO2, just to double check here. You can also auscultate and so look for bilateral chest rise. So it turns yellow, and we're actually going to recheck here. So air entry. It's great. Both both, Great. both axillae and over the stomach? And you don't hear it in the stomach. I'm sorry? You don't hear it in the stomach. Sorry, okay, so no gurgling in the stomach, and I've auscultated both axilla. Yeah. I'm sort of going at this on the fly. Okay, so, and uh, compliance is good? Compliance is good. Okay, good. Sats are actually coming up? Sats are coming up. Okay, good thing. All right, so we're actually going to do that. Now, if you could do me a favor, G, just hold his head for me. While, while, and you're going to bag him at uh, one breath every... So G every is providing inline stabilization. Okay. Uh, while... So, hang on a second. Just, Bob is just hold his head. Okay. I'm going to open up the collar, and I'm actually going to uh, just palpate down here, see if I can see any palpable step-offs. I don't feel anything. So he's just checked the C-spine for palpable step-off deformities. And I'm actually looking at the trachea, uh, make sure it's midline, and checking for a sub q emphysema. I can feel the pulses quite well. Uh, he'll also listen for bruises and for any hematomas. He'll examine. He'll also look for any penetrating or blunt trauma. All right. So I actually, <laughs> I actually do that, and I don't hear any. No breeze? No breeze. No. Okay, good. Yeah. So we'll actually reclose this and I can still fix stuff at the top. Uh, now I'm actually going to go to the chest. Now, Kari, do me a favor. Uh, okay, every every vent that Kari gives, I'm actually just going to check for chest symmetry. And chest symmetry is... That's good. Okay. As I'm palpating, do I feel any uh, flail segments? You feel a flail segment on the right side. On the left side or right side? Oh, left side, sorry. Left side, left okay. Side, yeah. All right, and just press down here on the sternum. And the sternum is stable. It's stable, okay. So there is a uh, 
Um, you I'll also feel right some sub-Q emphysema on the left side. Okay, which would be consistent with the uh, uh, pneumothorax under tension. And the chest tube is in place, and I think that would be a, what size? I think it's a tw uh, 16, 14? 20, yeah. I think, eh? 20. 20, yeah. yeah. And do we get blood out of that? There's no blood in the chest tube. No blood in the chest tube? Okay. Yeah. All right, next thing we're actually do, we actually... Why is it important to ask for blood in the chest tube? Pneumothorax. Well, if he's a, a hemothorax. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, fine now. Uh, abdomen, I'm really just going to palpate cursory, but we actually did a fast, so that would actually provide me with greater detail. I'm just actually going to press on the... And uh, so uh, press on the ASIS, close... Uh, the ASIS. The pelvis you notice is lax and uh, you might have opened it a little bit. What are you going to do? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually just going to splint this. I'm just going to grab a large towel yeah. and put it around uh, his pelvis. Do me a favor, Ajay, just hold that there. Yeah. Okay, stand so by. In lieu of, uh, so we're actually going to do this here. No, actually, I don't want to move him. Yeah. So I'll slide it up. <coughs> yeah. Okay, we're actually going to just. Actually, we'll say that it's actually tied better, but we'll actually do a larger one. Yeah, you'd use a larger, larger sheet for this. Larger thing. sheet, okay, fine. Yeah. Um, okay, um, uh, genitals? Genitals are swollen, swollen, and you notice blood at the meatus. Okay, so we're going to have to hold that, all right. So that would be suggestive of uh, um, urethral di disruption. I'll check the prostate in a second. What about the perineum? Perineum is uh, there's some lacerations present. Okay, all right. So let's just continue down with the left lower leg. And I'll palpate, no blood here, and it's the leg is intact? The leg is intact. Okay, knee? Knee is intact. Okay, uh, <coughs> pull this down here. I was not expecting this. Okay, we'll watch the movement. So I'll actually come down to the tibia. Yeah. And uh, the leg, is, uh, the foot is okay here? It's okay, yeah. Distal pulses? Distal pulses are patent. Okay, good. All right, cap refill? Cap refill is good. Okay. And I'll do the same thing on the opposite leg over here. So you notice a deformity at the, in the mid femur. Okay. Um, and you notice swelling as okay, well. Okay, so ortho is going to have to splint this because there's a possibility of a. Uh, what can you do for now? So what we'll actually do is we'll just actually put it. Uh, um, I'd like to put traction on it, but I'll just immobilize it. Yeah. So traction would be all optimal. And what I want to do is, because of this injury here, and it's probably a large hematoma, I just want to double check right now for distal pulses. Um, the pulses are not patent on that leg. Okay, where is ortho? Yeah. Okay, so we'll actually have to put a little bit of traction on this here. So now that you've put some traction and reduced the femur fracture, it is the pulses are now... Just with your... With your uh, Right so hand underneath the ankle. So always yeah. after and before any manipulation of a bone, you should always recheck your uh, pulses, and it's now patent. Oh, okay, yay. All right, so on this happy note, I just want to double check the upper extremities. We've got two lines in and then else. Now we're going to have to do a log roll, and you're still bagging them. So on the next thing I want to do, uh, Ajay, can you come to... Uh, the, most of the injuries are on the uh, left side, yeah. so we'll roll them onto his right side, on the unaffected side, or mostly. So Ajay, actually, uh, on hand, shoulder, hip, uh, Andrea, hip, leg, and I actually want to take a big flannel and put it between the legs over here. Let's assume they put three kilograms of traction on that. Okay, okay so we have... And if I can get somebody to just follow through with the, with the lower limbs, just the legs like this, on the count of three, what we're going to do, and real, actually what I'd like you to do probably is go to the other side, uh, so we don't pull the tube out. I'll just keep pulling that tube. So it's a little bit easier, that way we won't pull the tube out if we roll them over. And just make sure you hold the tube, uh, just so we don't migrate at all. It's all good. Alright, um, and what I might do as well is entitle CO2 and just probably uh, ventilate him. Neuro should be coming down, so I want to have this guy still ventilated. So what Bob is doing, he's continuously reassessing and checking his vital signs on his uh, patient. And he's on the monitor, so if anything happens, we'll pick it up. So right. that's excellent. And so the other thing is probably just bag him, just to watch your uh, entitled CO2 um, come down to about uh, 32. Um, okay, so on, on the G, is the bed high enough for you? Yes. Okay, make sure you actually cradle his head properly. On the count of three, G, you can actually get him to roll, uh, log roll him to 90 degrees. One, two, three, roll. Okay, all right. So now what we're going to do here is I want to double check and see if there's anything uh, bleeding at this point. I'm actually just going to palpate again. Where I had double checked the, the cervical spine and I'm going down the spinous processes, paraspinal processes as well, just to see if I can palpate anything. If he was conscious, right. Bob would be asking if it's at, at each level. And ask him where I'm touching. So I can actually feel all of, uh, <coughs> and there's a speaker back here, so that's a good thing. 
um, and I feel down the, uh, the spinous processes, so throw 12 uh, a spinal, come to the lumbar area, do the lumbar, <coughs> and at this point here, while I'm down, I just want to double check and just have another quick listen, see if I don't have any blood. So, bag? Clear. Bag? Clear breath sound. Bag? Clear. And Clear. bag? That's Clear. good? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to actually now, that you got him over, um, because he's unconscious now, we may not uh, get any rectal toll, so I'll just put a couple of gloves on and put some jungle juice on, and uh, just sort of actually have a, uh, have a feel. I hate this part, but anyway, we're going to do that anyway. So we actually stick the finger in uh, the anus, and I do feel a little squeeze, Yeah. Uh, and I uh, just feel for prostate, and then... He has a high writing prostate. So that would actually be consistent with uh, the potential for uh, urethral disruption. And I pull my finger out, is there any blood? There's blood. Okay, so we'll actually... Okay, so there's blood. All right, so for the rest, on the count of three, we'll actually ro log roll him back. Um, did I miss anything at this point? Uh, nope. Okay, so on the count of three, let's bring him back. So we should have ortho uh, watch the, the, the tube. Um, okay, so that would be the next thing. So we'll bring him back on One, the count of three. Two, three, down. Okay, so he's back. We're going to go back to ABCs. We should uh, do the two-step log roll. Oh, okay, so we'll do the other side as well. So we'll actually come to this side. Oh, this is the same we did. Yeah, yeah. so, okay, so we'll assume. And so what are the findings on the two-step? Uh, no findings. Okay, so we'll go back to ABCs. We should have had our bloods, or some of the bloods, um, back already. What's the hemoglobin? The hemoglobin is 95. Okay, so we should actually, we called for some... What uh, blood did you order? Uh, we called for O, uh, o, ne o negative on, on this guy. So we'll actually have to give him um, a couple of units. Well, actually, he's at 95 now. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we'll probably give him one unit to start, and uh, we'll keep the issue of uh, balanced transfusion in the back of our minds. Um, so what Bob's done is we've ordered, uh, now that the secondary survey is done, we can order our basic labs, uh, basically CBC, lights, LFTs, uh, urinalysis, and uh, he's ordering blood because the patient's blood pressure is still low, um, and he's still tachycardic. Okay, that's okay. No. no. Okay, so what we want to do here, if his blood pressure is still low, we've we've infused how many liters now? A You've given liter? two liters so Two far. liters, okay. Yeah. So on the third liter, we're going to start blood, and I probably want to consider, like, he needs to meet a surgeon, this guy, but we'll probably look at um, dopamine. Uh, transiently to, to keep his pressure up and get him to the OR. Mm -hmm. So uh, probably 10 mics per kilo per minute at this point to see if we get any uh, alpha effects. And um, apart from that, we also want to find out if there's any history in this guy mm -hmm. um, as far as any meds, uh, medical problems or allergies. Um, did I forget anything? I'm like, I'm no, that's I'm pretty good. I'm good job.